Hi everybody, Tom Chapman here and welcome back to my Map Tool tutorial series. And today we're going to begin a four video kind of arc talking about a single part of Map Tool, one of the menus. And these are known as campaign properties. Now, it's kind of hard to describe what the campaign properties are, so we're just going to dive right into the actual video and I'll show you. So here I have my Crypt of the Everflame uh, that I've been working on, and I'm going to show you where to find the campaign properties. So we're going to go up here to the Edit menu, click on it, and come down, and Campaign Properties are right here above Preferences. I'm going to click on it and Open. Now if you look up here, we have six different items that fall under Campaign Properties. Now today, we're just going to talk about Token Properties. But what campaign properties are, are there, there are ways to set up under the hood of Map Tool to make it do exactly what you want. So first off, uh, token properties, what we're talking about today. What are they? Well, I'm going to show you by opening up a token. So here I have this skeleton. We've kind of talked about properties here, but the properties are, like in most games, the stats that are represented as numbers or descriptions that every character, NPC or PC, has. Properties for tokens allow you to store these numbers in a token and then you can use them as part of macros later on or you can also set them up so that they display as a mini character sheet when you hover over a token. So for example, Right here I have description. This token is boring and has no description. So when I hover over it, we can see down here in the lower left hand corner, I have my token, it shows up, and we get this little thing that says description. And I have this token is boring and has no description. Now, how do we set up these properties? Because if we look in here, Map Tool comes with all these basic ones, but chances are your game either doesn't use these or requires, a, or requires a number of other stats in order for the token to work. So we're going to go over all of that. So again, I'm going to come up here to Edit, Campaign Properties, and here I am on Token Properties. Map Tool comes loaded with the basic pack. So here we have Strength, Dexterity, Constitution, all that stuff right there. It is up to you if you want to use this as a starting point and add to it or come up with your own. But first, let's say we want to add to it. So if we look down here under Format, it shows us the order that we should put things in order for them to show up on the properties. And we'll go through this one at a time. First off, for example, up here on HP, we have a little asterisk at the beginning. An asterisk means that when you hover over a token, if there's anything input in that property, it will show up as a stat on the mini stat sheet. So let me close out, go to the skeleton, and let's say it has four hit points. I'll hit OK. And now when I hover over it, if we look down in the lower left, we see HP 4. Next we have the at sign. Now at, in combination with asterisk, it must be used with the asterisk, means that only the assigned owner can see this property when the token is hovered over. So if I go over here and my skeleton has an ownership of all players, then anybody can see that when they hover over it. Or if no one's selected, only the GM can see it when they hover over it. Or let's say you have PC tokens and you have a very secretive PC that doesn't want anybody else to see what he has. Or he or she can come in here, make sure that the ownership is set to them, and whenever anybody hovers over them, they can't see all this extra information, but the player themselves can. Coming back up here, the add symbol again lets the owner see it, but we can also default this, and we can switch out an at or add to the at with the number sign. It's the same as the at symbol, but only the GM can see it. So the GM can set it so that uh, a number of these stats that really don't matter to the players on their tokens uh, will not show up in their mini stat sheet, but when the GM hovers over those tokens, he or she can see it. Parentheses, as it shows right here, is the shortened name. This is for display only. Let me show you again with our little skeleton. So let's give it a strength of 10. 
Right now, strength fully spelled out 10. Hit OK. Now when I hover over it, oops, I guess I should assign it as visible. Now when I hover over it, strength is displayed, but it gives the shortened name down there, str. So when it's in the parentheses, when you're setting up your campaign properties under your token type, the parentheses is the shortened name that shows up on the stat sheet. Now the last thing that you can add, if we look down here, is a colon. I've added a colon after the description. And what a colon does is it defaults this to be put into every token as blank. So I've defaulted this. This token is boring and has no description. Well, I don't like that, so I'm going to take it and delete it. Update. OK. And now the description is blank in here, where before it said this token is boring and has no description. Now one more thing before I show anything else. Let's go back up here. And I should mention this. When it comes to token properties, each property takes up its own line. So you can't have a long string of them. It just won't work out very well. So each new line is a new property. And let's say, for example, you want to make this look really organized, and you put a space between Charisma and HP to show that these are two different areas. It's not going to show up that way on your properties. It'll squish it back down and get rid of the spaces because they're not needed. In addition, if you have something, let's say you have something really long like a fortitude save. You can't write fortitude save with a space. That will not save. When you put in a token property, there can be no spaces between it. So you can have fortitude save base with no spaces and that would work. With spaces, it's just not going to function because this starts to turn into code. I'm going to delete this and all that stuff and update that. Now you've noticed I've gone over and clicked on update a number of times. This is the save function for your token types. If I were to go on here and let's say I wanted to add, uh, again, fortitude, save. If I didn't hit update and just hit OK, I'd get to my token and go, wait, I just put that there. Where did it go? Hmm. Come back up here and I open this back up and I see that it has disappeared. If you don't hit update, it will not save any of the token properties you've added. And you've, you'll have to go back and re-input them. Don't do what I did and learn from my mistakes. Don't put in 25 different things that took you forever to come up with and then hit OK and go, oh, whoops, forgot to save. Now, let's say that you want to create a new set of token properties, which you can do if I go into here. You can set what kind of properties this token uses, basic or like what I have here, Pathfinder tokens. You can have multiple token properties set up for a single campaign. And I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. We come down here to new. We give it a name such as Pathfinder number two. And then we start adding the stats we want. So for example, let's do the Pathfinder, or let's do Strength again, and then let's also do Strength Modifier. Now what's cool about this is if I hit Update, that's now saved, hit OK, come to my skeleton, I now have, once I select it in the Config menu, I now have Strength and Strength Modifier. Now let's say I don't like that Strength, I'll give it a 20. Now in Pathfinder, the way that stats work is you take the stat as it's given as a whole number, you divide it by two and round down minus five. Now that's a lot to go through and I, maybe I don't want to do the strength and then come in here and go, all right, well, a 20 is a strength modifier of five. That's not how I really want to do that. I'm going to hit OK and that'll save that. The cool thing about campaign properties, as I said before, is if you put in a colon, Anything that comes out after that colon is then defaulted into any token with this set. Now, the cool thing is, is you can start doing things like macros inside the token properties. Now, for example, I just said that uh, the strength modifier in Pathfinder is actually the stat divided by two rounded down minus five. So I can start with this. 
In order to do this, I start with a left brace, which starts a code. I input the equation, and I'm going to copy it from what I already have. Copy and paste. And then to end the equation, I do a right brace. Now what this entire equation says is I start with floor strength divided by two. What that means is right in here, inside these parentheses, I have strength. So first off, this equation will reference the strength, whatever number is there, divide it by two. Floor tells it what to do after it's done strength divided by two. Floor is map tool's way of saying rounding down. Now if you have a different system, uh, instead of floor, let me copy this over and you can see it. It's the same thing, only it's ceiling, and we just use the letters C-E-I-L, and that rounds it up. So I have floor, round down this number, and subtract 5. I'm going to click Update, OK. So I'm going to come down to this different skeleton to show you this. I'm going to open it, set my config for Pathfinder number 2. I'm going to come to Properties, and now let's do this. Give it a strength of 20. We see that the strength modifier already has this equation put into it, and now when we hover over it, if we look in the lower left, it gives us our strength modifier. All right. Our strength modifier is 5. Now that makes it really convenient if you have a lot of derived stats, and that's what we call this. These are derived properties. Um, so you could even set this up so that your AC automatically calculates from everything else that you input and things like that. Now, if we want to delete a certain type of token type, so for example, let's say, no, Pathfinder number 2 is not working. I'll just take it, delete the name, and click Update. And now when I come down here, under Config, Properties, it no longer exists. I have to reselect Basic. Now your mind's probably already spinning, thinking about, oh man, all the great things that I could put into my tokens. And you're right. Uh, at one point, I think I had the entire Pathfinder core rulebook input into Map Tool. And it took me a long time to do, and it was a lot of fun. But ultimately, you have to ask yourself, how much do you want how much time do you want to spend on macros and properties and how much time do you want to spend just prepping and playing it's up to you and it depends on how much time you have if this is what you were looking for then you can get the program to do pretty much anything there's some amazing videos out there of what you can do however i often just anymore use map tool for maps and organization but i still have players use physical dice whether we're in the same room or not now I want to give you another example of what can happen with these properties. So I kind of took some time and I don't have it saved anymore so I had to start from scratch but I started my own Pathfinder tokens. Token property and I have strength and strength modifiers and I have all this stuff built in and I've started to work on it even to the point that I've got calculations for how to calculate the total AC down here with size bonuses and all that stuff. So it would obviously take a lot of time to set up these tokens, but if we come down here, I've already got this skeleton going a little bit with some properties. I've got some numbers put in and everything. And let's say, for example, just to show you what can be done, I want to roll an acrobatics roll. So if we look here, I've got my acrobatics rank put in, and I've got my dex modifier. That's almost everything you need to roll an acrobatics check. I've got this token selected. I'm gonna come over here to my tab, my selection tab, and you'll notice I have a number of things already placed in. So for example, let's say I just want to know what my dex mod is. I have a macro that pulls that number. Your dex mod is five. Let's say I want to know what my acrobatics modifier is with just my ranks. So I have this uh, macro set up so that when I click on it, it tells me how many ranks I put into acrobatics. So four. Now, let's say I want to combine all of this stuff. I want to combine my dex modifier. I want to combine my acrobatics ranks. And because of Pathfinder, I also want to add in my plus four bonus for being trained in that skill. So I come up here to my acrobatics roll macro and I click on it. And I have this set up so it says I make an acrobatics roll. I majestically roll a 17. And I also have it set up so that when I hover over that number 17, it brings up this tooltip that shows me, all right, here's what the program did. It did 1d20 plus acrobatics rank plus dex mod plus x, which I use as the proficiency bonus. And then it shows me all the numbers there that it came up with. Now, 
under acrobatics roll, if I edit it and open it, you can kind of see everything that I went through. Like this equation is what I used with the acrobatics rank to decide if this token gets the plus four bonus or not. And then I have all my other stuff down here. To show you another idea, use magic device in Pathfinder as charisma base and also a skill. But what's interesting about this one is it's one of the skills you cannot use untrained. You have to have one rank in it to use it. So I set this macro up to do that too. Now I have something at the beginning so I can see what the dice roll was and only I see that as the GM, but then it pumps out the rest. I make a use magic device roll, hoping the item does not blow up in my hand. I majestically roll a or an 11. And that's the total that it came up with, with the 1d20 plus use magic device rank plus charisma modifier plus X, which I use as the, um, as the proficiency bonus. Now let's go in here. That's what it outputs when I have at least one rank and use magic device. Let's say I have no ranks in there. Okay. Come up, click on my macro again. Again, this is a trained skill. You have to be trained in it with one skill rank. I click on it, and now it spits out this. You are not trained in this skill. Give up now. <laughs> uh, and that's what it outputs. I make a use magic device roll, hoping the item does not blow up in my hand. I majestically roll A. You are not trained in this skill. Give up now. So if I click on that and open it, this gets even more complicated, and we'll come up with macros later. Again, I have the proficiency bonus. I have... Now, two options. If my use magic device rank is greater than zero, then roll a normal skill check. If it's not greater than zero, you can't do it and spit out this information. And then I have this pop up. Now, the last thing I want to show you is how to save these token properties so you can input them in another campaign. So I come up to edit, go to campaign properties, and I'm going to select Pathfinder token because I haven't saved it yet. I'm going to come down here to export, and this allows me to save it. So I'll just say Pathfinder token properties, and I hit save. It tells me it's saved. Then if I open up another uh, map tool campaign, I can come down to import, go to where I saved it on my desktop, and there it is. I just hit open, and it uploads another set of uh, token properties into my new uh, campaign properties for my new campaign. Now there's another way to do this because I tend to make a lot of different adventures and each new campaign tends to be a new adventure uh, and because of the number of macros and table uh, tables I have I find it easier to just save one base version of my campaign that I start with each time and any changes or updates I make to it I will just reopen that base save it there, and then each new adventure, I just put it in from there and resave it. So that finishes up token properties for today. I'll see you in the next video uh, where we'll start talking about repositories, and then soon we'll be able to start using all of this together and get into macros. So thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.